Chapter 1 Episode 4. The Duke Returns. Two weeks had passed since the Duke's party went home. Ryoma was busy spending his days hunting and looking after slimes, when one day four people suddenly visited his home. Boy. Ryoma. Hey, it's me. Hughes. Not an enemy. The one yelling in front of his home was the person who had been injured when he visited two weeks prior, Hughes. With him were Jill, Camille, and Zeph, who had also been there. They stood outside the rock-sealed entrance of the house and yelled loudly to be heard inside. Only for Ryoma to come out of the thicket behind them. I'm over here. Whoa. Oh, you were outside. I was hunting. Why are you here? We wanted to thank you properly for before. That's why we've brought presents. But there's quite a few, so we left them in a spot a bit further from here, along with Lord Reinhardt and his family, two maids, and their butler who can use space magic. Sorry to spring this upon you, but do you have time now? If you are busy, we can come back another day. Ryoma thought for a moment, but he didn't have anything in particular going on, and wasn't about to turn them away for no reason after they'd come so far either. Once he agreed, the four escorts went into the forest to call the others over. In that time, Ryoma called back all the slimes he had sent out hunting and went about preparing to welcome his guests. After the preparations were completed roughly 30 minutes later, Ryoma and his thousand-odd clamoring slimes basked in the sun as they awaited their rare guests. Eventually, Reinhardt's party appeared. The slimes started to vibrate in response to the approaching people. That prompted Ryoma to check the state of his clothes one more time before looking at the figures. There were a total of 11 people. Behind Reinhardt stood a woman and a young girl, both unfamiliar but beautiful. They were followed by a man who was elderly but walked upright in a dignified manner, and further behind him were the two maids and the butler Hughes had mentioned. They proceeded in a formation sandwiched between the four escorts. Based on their clothes, the three behind Reinhardt must be his family. But the butler clothes and maid outfits sure stand out. Isn't it hard to move around the forest like that? Is that the boy? There are so many slimes. Ho oh, oh. ho. I'd heard he had tamed a lot of slimes, but I wasn't expecting this many. They may be slimes, but being able to control that many is impressive. The more familiars they have, the harder it is for a tamer to form a contract, after all. They approached while Ryoma was questioning the practicality of maid outfits, and the young maid made a face at the large number of slimes. In contrast, the three members of Reinhardt's family were gazing at the slimes in interest. Once they arrived in the area before Ryoma's house, Reinhardt walked up to Ryoma. It's been two weeks since then, Ryoma. I'm sure you've heard already, but today we came to repay our debt to you. We brought some presents. Thank you very much. Oh no, they're just a sign of our gratitude. Honey, why don't you introduce us first? The beautiful woman called out from behind Reinhardt, reminding him of introductions. Allow me to introduce you. This is my father, Reinbach, wife, Elise, and daughter, Eliaria. I'm Reinbach Jamil, the previous head of the House of Jamil. Sorry for intruding on such short notice. It's nice to meet you. Elise Jamil. Thank you for helping my husband and his subordinates out the other day. Eliaria Jamil. Pleased to make your acquaintance. It is an honor to make your acquaintance. My name is Ryoma Takebayashi. Thank you for coming from so far away. I cannot offer much, but I welcome you to my home. Despite being disjointed, the unexpected manner of speech left the ducal house and their escorts around them with rounded eyes, Reinbach returned to his senses first. There's no need for such polite speech. Please talk to us casually. 
We don't need any hospitality either. Were the ones intruding out of the blue. Thank you very much. Please, come inside. Ah. Figuring it would be better to talk inside the house, Ryoma tried to invite them in when he realized all his slimes were blocking the entrance and ordered the slimes inside first. It really is an amazing number to see in the light. Is it just me, or have they increased a little? After you left. They split. Reinhardt's observation while watching the slimes rush inside the house was correct. Their numbers were as follows. Sticky Slime X364 Poison Slime X323 Acid Slime X211 Cleaner Slime X11 Scavenger Slime X730 Healing Slime X2 They had, to put it bluntly, increased a little too much. As of late, Ryoma was having trouble maintaining their taming contract and feeding of all the slimes. He had now restricted the diets and was making sure their nutrition wasn't being used on evolution or splitting. Slimes didn't need much food to just stay alive. He had been prepared to take responsibility and cull some of the numbers if it didn't work out. But fortunately a goblin settlement had taken up residence in the forest in the past two weeks, so he managed to make do by eliminating them. Furthermore, the goblin extermination brought more fortune than just food. When Ryoma cast his healing magic in a panic on some of the slimes he saw were gravely wounded from goblin attacks. The next day, two of the surviving slimes had evolved into healing slimes, a new kind of slime that could use healing magic. Healing slime. Skills. Healing Magic 1, Life Enhancement 1, Photosynthesis 3, Consume 1, Absorb 1, Split 2. The birth of the healing slimes had sparked a fire within Ryoma once more, but he was holding back due to his current situation. Will they all fit inside the room? It's become. Okay. Become okay. What do you mean by that? Watch. At Reinhardt's question, Ryoma gave the slimes an order. The biggest issue after they split was actually the matter of living space. However, that problem was solved by accident three days after they split. And the trigger for it had been a wild idea that popped into Ryoma's head. Ryoma had been looking at the slimes that overflowed from the living space made for the slimes into his own bedroom floor when he muttered, why can't these slimes combine or something? You know, like in Drive GNQ asterisk street. At that moment, all the slimes started vibrating intensely, and all the slimes of the same species gathered together and formed single slimes in no time at all. Ryoma appraised them all in a panic to see. Big Sticky Slime X1. Skills. Strong Sticky Solution 5, Hardening Sticky Solution 4, Sticky String Shot 3, Physical Attack Resistance 1, Maximize 2, Minimize 4, Jump 2, Consume 3, Absorb 3, Big Poison Slime X1. Skills. Poison Production 4, Poison Resistance 4, Paralyzing Poison Production 4, Physical Attack Resistance 1, Maximize 2, Minimize 4, Jump 1, Consume 3, Absorb 3, Big Acid Slime X. Skills. Acid Production 5, Acid Resistance 4, Physical Attack Resistance 1, Maximize 2, Minimize 4, Jump 2, Consume 4, Absorb 3, Huge Scavenger Slime X1. Skills. Disease Resistance 5. Poison Resistance 5. Foul Feeder 6, Cleanse 6, Deodorize 6, Deodorant Solution 4, Stench Release 5, Nutrient Reduction 4, Physical Attack Resistance 2, Maximize 3, Minimize 5, Jump 2, Consume
Ryoma had been surprised at first, but when he ordered the slimes to change back, they returned to their original number of separate slimes. Relieved, Ryoma repeated the experiment in excitement. As a result, he discovered that they could combine and separate as they pleased, forming a big slime when there were over 100 of the same species, and a huge slime when there were more than 500. For the record, slime numbers under 100 couldn't combine, and it was precisely at the end of 499 and the start of 500 where the name changed from big to huge. Fortunately, the combined slimes could use their minimized skill to shrink to a size slightly larger than a single slime. They still ate several times more than a single slime, but considering how they were a mass of hundreds of slimes, the diet was basically reduced to 2 to 5 percent. In other words, they were able to drastically save on space and the amount of food needed. Which made Ryoma wonder if this was a form of self-protection to maintain their living conditions and counter the shortage of food. He had no proof, but that's what he believed. Furthermore, considering the fact that big slimes were formed from a minimum of 100 slimes of the same species and lost their splitting skill upon doing so, it was reasonable to believe slimes larger than big ones were also made by combining their respective species. There were still unsolved questions like where all the extra mass went during combining and minimizing, but for now Ryoma was glad the matter of space and food was solved efficiently. Thinking it would be easier to show than explain, Ryoma had ordered the slimes to combine in front of Reinhardt and the others but the sight left the three adults of the ducal house with wide eyes, the others falling silent as they stared intently. A big slime. No way. No, there's no mistaking it. You tamed a big slime. Is that weird? Big slimes are a monster no one has been able to tame yet, you. No. Ha. Noticing how Elisa's words confused Ryoma, Reinbach stepped in to explain. Certain advanced species of slimes like big slimes are unaffected by taming contracts, the crux of taming magic. Many have tried to tame them before, but there have been no successful attempts. Hearing that Ryoma understood. Taming contract. No point. Should be obvious. And why is that? Everyone's eyes gathered on Ryoma, who looked slightly uncomfortable as he started to talk. Big slime. Gathering of many slimes. Does not fulfill. Conditions of taming contract. Only one contract can be formed at a time. Lots at once is impossible. Taming one among a hundred others. Cannot single out precisely. Because it looks like one core. That's why taming contract. Has no effect. I. Tamed lots of slimes. Gathered them. And they became this. Ryoma's side. What happened? Everyone's got a scary look in their eyes. Especially the adults of the family. Did I do something wrong? Marvelous. Ha! Did something happen? What was marvelous? That's amazing, Ryoma. You've solved one of the great taming mysteries of the world. Hmm. What's up with these people? Their eyes are so intent and they're way too enthusiastic about this topic. It's kinda scary. My lady, Lord Rhinebach, please calm down. You are frightening Master Ryoma. Ah. I'm sorry, please don't be scared. My apologies, I got carried away there. It's fine. If I could explain the reason why they got excited. The reason you gave for why big slimes can't be tamed is a mystery many tamers have tried to solve without success. Big slimes aren't amazingly strong, but they're difficult monsters to fight, which is why many people have tried to tame them to use as obstacles. Some people still try now and then. But, as I said earlier, there have been no successful attempts. For a long time now. 
it has been researched by those who failed in their attempts and proud tamers who viewed the ineffectiveness of the taming contract a problem, as the contract is the heart of taming magic. However, none were able to come up with results and research efforts were reduced, leaving it unsolved until now. Then you came along and solved such a mystery all by yourself. Wow. Things sure took a crazy turn. Hmm. That's a rather weak reaction. What if I put it like this? Research into why big slimes couldn't be tamed started at the same time taming magic spread throughout this world. There were just no results coming out of it, so the current research institution treats it as a convenient and cushy payroll spot. A long unsolved mystery that everyone gave up on was solved by you. This is no time to be remaining calm. Could it be true? It was by total coincidence, but it seemed like things could get bothersome. What to do? What should we do? Register him with the Tamas Guild and announce it. Ah, was there some kind of institution that gathered information like that? Based on the reactions of these people, announcing it could turn into a huge deal, which seems bothersome. But it could be a good chance to leave the forest. Town, ha! Huh. The words that slipped out of my mouth caused the four family members and the maids and butler behind them to react. I'm sorry, I know you don't like towns. We won't insist that you register and announce it, but this truly is a monumental discovery. Please understand that. I understand. Ah. The combining of slimes had unblocked the entrance. For now. Come in, please. There were monsters outside, so standing around for too long was dangerous. I let them all inside and started preparing tea in the back. It was just the other day that I discovered several tins of seemingly high-quality tea leaves among the loot of some bandits that had attacked. Since they look good and hadn't expired yet, it should be fine to serve them. The main problem was the cups. Just like with the chairs and furniture, I didn't have enough for twelve people, so I had to make them with earth magic in a hurry. Next to the tea, I served some honey I gathered from a beehive the other day, as well as some ginger and fruit juice resembling lemon found on the same day to make a honey lemon syrup. This was the only thing I had in place of sugar, so I hoped it would be all right. Sorry for the wait. Have some tea. Oh my, thank you very much. It smells lovely, thank you. Hmm. It seems you have some rather good leaves. There were lots. Among the bandits that attacked. I see. Oh ho, this is good. Yes, it is indeed. The flavor of the leaves has steeped well. Where did you learn to pour tea like this, Master Ryoma? In my previous life. Though I couldn't actually say that aloud. My grandmother. Loved drinking tea. The almighty excuse. Grandparents. I owed the gods a lot for coming up with this excuse. I was the type of person who couldn't keep my own secrets, after all. They called me foolishly honest in my previous life. Though I didn't see it myself. But for some reason, the lies came out of my mouth quite easily when they were decided for me beforehand. On top of that, it had been written in the God's letter that they had even called out the souls of my would-be grandparents and received permission from them. I was truly grateful for that. If you like, help yourself. To some honey. Thank you. I'll take some too. Honey's a high-class item, so I don't get it often. H. Hughes. I took it from a beehive. The other day. It was free. So please help yourself too, Camille. Oh, really? Then maybe just a little. You're no different than me. That was when. Eliaria, I think it was. The young lady took a sip of the tea and noticed something. Oh. This honey isn't just honey, is it? Is there something in it? The butler immediately checked it. 
Was the Geiger a ginger-like root? And lemon a lemon-like fruit a bad idea? There's lemon juice mixed into it. What a nice and refreshing taste. But that doesn't seem to be all. Thank goodness, they didn't think it was poison. I should just reply honestly here. It's not like it actually was poison or anything. I added. Geiger roots. So this taste was Geiger. I've never considered it as anything more than a bitter plant, but the way it brings out this flavor is wonderful. Geiger can be used in cooking. Meat. Fish. Gets rid of raw smell. That is a very interesting fact to learn. I shall inform the head chef next time we return. Thank you very much, Master Ryoma. You're welcome. Now, we got a little off track with all the surprises, but Ryoma, I've brought some things along today as a thank you for the other day. I'd love for you to accept them. Sebas. Right away. Item box. After drinking the tea and taking a breather, Reinhardt brought up the topic of presents, prompting the butler sitting at the back to stand up and use his magic, causing a black circle to appear in midair. He stuck his hand into that circle and took something out of it. Item box. It was one of the fundamental spells of the higher difficulty space magic that, as its name implied, could create a space for storing items. That's why I could use it too, but weren't there a few too many gifts? The table before me was getting crowded with baskets of fruit and packages wrapped in paper and fabric appearing one after another. Um, this many. Yes. We didn't know what you would be happy to receive, so we brought a variety of things. I'd like you to take them. Reinhardt said as he unwrapped a package. There were various things inside, ranging from preserved foods to clothes, writing utensils and desk clocks that functioned based on the same magic stones used as lights. They were all practical items missing from my home. It seemed like they had brought all the things they saw were missing last time they were here. The clothing sizes were estimated roughly, so if they don't fit you. Aron, Lillian. Yes. If you ask these two, they'll adjust it for you immediately. I had been wondering why the maids had come all the way out here, but was it really for this? I felt kind of bad for them, but at the same time I didn't have many clothes, so I was grateful. For now, I agreed to accept the items they offered as presents. Truly. Thank you so much. For bringing. So many things. It was no big deal. We had business around here anyway. Business. Come to think of it. Something about the forest. Yes, do you remember how I told you about my family having generations of tamers? My daughter Eliaria has been studying until now, but it's about time she got her own familiar. We came here to capture a slime for her first contract. Wow, her first contract. I guess she wasn't allowed one up until now, if he was saying it was about time. They were living creatures, so depending on the monster, they could be dangerous to care for. Well, either way, she was allowed one now. Congratulations. When I said that to the young lady sipping her tea, she smiled bashfully and thanked me. Apparently, she was yet to form her contract. We searched on our way here, but there wasn't a single slime in sight. Slimes are monsters, living creatures, after all. There'll be some days when they don't show up. Then, over here. I stood up from my seat and pointed at a spot on the forest map on my wall. River. The slimes. Go there often. Wild slimes often went there to drink water. So they could probably find one or two if they focused their search on that area. For the record, the most I had ever captured at once was 14, while on my way to fetch water. Although that had been just the one time. 
When I told her that, she informed the adults around her and received permission to go, before she turned back to me as though remembering something. May I call you Ryoma? Go ahead. Then, Ryoma. If it isn't too much trouble, could you teach me how to choose slimes? Choose. Yes. I only need to capture one slime, so if there are many in one place I won't know which one to capture. Oh, so that's what she meant. But there weren't any real differences between the slimes. If you are choosing, you can choose a slime that fits the evolution you want. But, it will take time. If you want to fight, go with another monster. If you are not keeping it for a long time, then there's no need to spend time choosing. Do you still want to choose? Yes, since it will be my first familiar. I shall treasure it forever. She sure had a pure smile directed my way. Well, I guess she really would treasure it, so it wouldn't hurt to lend a hand. Hmm. Why did I come to such a conclusion just now? I've never been able to tell such things before. Was I being tricked? Charmed. Me, a mentally 40-something-year-old man, being rooked by a child. Let's stop thinking about it. Is that all right? Well, I didn't mind teaching her, but with my speech in its current state. I was already anxious about my use of words. If only I could speak a little more smoothly. If you are fine with me. Sure. But, you can only choose. Out of three species. What's wrong with the other species? One. Unknown evolution condition. 1. None of the right food to feed. 1. Hard to make a lady do. Though the last one has the best abilities. Excuse me, could I have a minute? While I was talking to Eliaria, her mother came to join our conversation. Her expression was extremely serious. Mother. I am the one talking right now. This is preparation for my first contract, so I ask that you do not interfere. I know that, but there's something I can't help but wonder about. Ryoma, it almost sounded as though you knew the conditions for slime evolution. For an extent, yes. When I answered with that, Elise started muttering to Reinhardt as though I confirmed her suspicions. Reinhardt looked like he was shaking his head lightly. I've never heard of such a thing. Neither have I, I've only heard it was being researched. Or something like that. Could this be? Like with the big slimes. Yes, it is. Slimes exist everywhere, but they're actually very mysterious creatures. That's why you must be careful who you tell things to, understand. I thought it was a pretty simple thing, but, well, there were plenty of things that hadn't been explained in modern Japan, too. If there was anyone who researched slimes here, I'd like to talk to them one day. But for now, what should I do? I thought for a moment, but reached a conclusion rather easily. I'd tell them. To be honest, the results weren't as important to me as the process. The reason why I began researching was because I had an interest in slimes. The process of researching was the fun part, so I didn't really care about the results. Most importantly, I had already told them what I knew, so it was too late to hide anything anyway. It's okay. The evolution condition of slimes is food. The diet decides there are evolution species. Sticky slimes eat green caterpillars. Poison slimes eat poisonous plants. Slimes have their own food preferences, leading to their most suitable evolution. If you keep feeding food against their preferences, their evolution is delayed, and can sometimes end in death. I see, so that's the evolution condition of a slime. Eliaria expressed deep interest, so I nodded and continued speaking. If they have nutrition, they'll evolve easily. When you feed them more, they'll evolve faster. 
I use poisonous herbs, green caterpillars, cleaned animal bones, the slimes that gather around them, and respectively turn into poison slimes, sticky slimes, acid slimes. Which slimes couldn't be chosen? Cleaner slimes, scavenger slimes, healing slimes. But their abilities were exceptional. The members of the ducal house only seemed to know of the healing slime, as they exchanged looks of confusion. What kind of slimes are cleaner slimes and scavenger slimes? Their skills. Cleanse and deodorize, are their characteristics. Cleanse and deodorize. I've never heard of them. I can tell deodorize has to do with eliminating odors, but what does cleanse do? Would be easier to show you. Please wait a moment. I went into the back and took a blood-soaked cloth from where I was preparing a rabbit in the kitchen, then returned to the room with a cleaner slime. Thank you for waiting. This is a cleaner slime. Watch. A blood-soaked cloth. What are you going to do with it? Look. I gave the cleaner slime an order in my head. The slime took the cloth I was holding into its body and began to spin it around its core. I'd seen it many times now, but it still looked exactly like a washing machine to me. Ten seconds later, the slime spat out the cloth and picked it up with a tentacle-like extension of its body, handing it to me to show everyone clearly. The four members of the family showed a curious reaction at the sight, but the butler and two maids had a glint in their eyes. The blood is gone, right? And the color is a little different. Did it melt away? It was just absorbed by the slime, wasn't it? No, my lady. That's not all. Aron. The older one of the two maids reacted to Elisa's words. Apparently she was called Aron. Master Ryoma, that slime eats filth, doesn't it? That's correct. What does that mean? Based on the material of that cloth, I believe it was covered in much more filth than just blood in its earlier state. Its current state is the original color of the cloth. Grime gets harder to wash off the more it builds up. Even if you spent time handwashing the earlier cloth, it may have never returned to its original color. In other words, the cleansing skill has the ability to remove even the most stubborn of grime, is that correct? That's partially correct. To be more precise, it only removes the grime. I gave the slime an order and stuck my hand holding the cloth into the slime's body. What? This is beyond words. A normal slime would consume everything it takes into its body. They probably thought my hand would melt off. The expressions of everyone in the room stiffened. However, my right hand was unaffected as I removed it from the slime five seconds later. Are you unharmed? It only dissolves the filth. It's a slime that only eats what it's ordered to. Be it humans or animal meat. So such a slime exists. Please don't scare me like that, it's bad for my heart. Sorry. That was normal for me. Since it's not a cloth I usually want to touch. True, you couldn't call that a clean cloth. It used to be a goblin's loincloth. When I said that, Eliaria frowned while the maids showed even more interest. This world did have the saying that there's nothing dirtier than a goblin's loincloth. With this slime, you can keep clean in any situation. You can't bathe. While traveling. Right. Yes, the most we can do is wipe down our bodies. This is my first extended journey, and I felt disgusting after a single day without a bath. This slime solves. That problem. The young lady whipped her head towards me at that. Scary. Her eyes and everything else were scary. Her mother and the two maids also had intense looks in their eyes. It eats. All the dirt and smell. From your body and clothes, so. That one. The cleaner slime, I want that one. Oh no, 
Why did I make a sales pitch for the one I said couldn't be chosen myself? And it was the hardest one to talk about, too. Ugh. I must have gotten too excited about slimes. I should have talked about scavenger slimes instead. But the selection criteria for this one is. No. After showing me such a wonderful slime, saying that is too mean. Master Ryoma, as a maid from a family that has served the house of Jamil for generations, I have also learned the basics of taming magic. Please teach us the method of choosing a cleaner slime. I want to know too. All the women seemed rather invested. It must have been pretty important to them. The men had all backed away a bit, and the four escorts looked completely unconcerned. Ryoma. I ask that you refrain from upsetting the women. It's hard to say. In front of ladies. It's something you can't tell them. No, I don't mind telling. It's just. Hard to say. If they're the ones asking for it, shouldn't it be fine? Camille caught my gaze and asked casually, trying to mediate between us. I took the four escorts with me into a corner of the room and quietly whispered the selection method and how I came to learn it. I understand why you don't want to say it. So such a method existed, ha. Huh. It certainly would be difficult for a man to say that to a woman. Wouldn't it be hard for women to say that to each other, too? Well, whatever happens, happens. It was Hughes who stated that simply. He then turned around and shouted to the women, young miss. My lady. I know the method. You listen to, Aron. Wait, what was this person thinking? Did he have a good way of telling them? Really? Yeah. Young miss, wash your body. Then you lure the slimes to the dirty bar water and feed it to them. He said it. He just straight up said it. Ah. There goes the fair palms of the ladies making contact with his face. After the women had calmed down, Reinhardt explained how the conclusion Hughes revealed had been reached. When given the option between clean water and dirty bathwater, normal slimes would go for the clean water. But for some reason, slimes that can evolve into cleaner slimes like to gather around bathwater. Once they evolved into cleaner slimes, they stopped eating regular meals and lived off grime and water alone. That was why they loved grimy water the most, as it was a combination of the two. I never imagined there would be a slime of such a nature. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, no, it's not your fault, Ryoma. Cleaner slimes. Might be hard for a woman to capture. Ryoma. Ha. Huh. I still want a cleaner slime after all. It seemed like Eliaria didn't want to give up on cleaner slimes. Then, one of your escorts. That cannot do. I may be a trainee, but I'm going to become a tamer. I cannot rely on others to do things for me. Doing everything alone. Isn't always. A good thing. Even so, I want to take the first step myself. The decision is yours. My lady. I. I. I'll do it. Could I have some of your water? Everyone around me shed a tear at that declaration. Eliaria was fighting back a deep blush. There was no need for her to force herself. And what was with this atmosphere? It was like an important decision had been made when in reality what she had to do was. You know. But now that it's come to this, I'd feel bad just bringing out water and calling it a day, so I offered her the bathtub. As a former Japanese person, there were times when I wanted to submerge myself in a bath, so I had made a proper bathtub. Though I had never imagined this would happen to it. There is, a bath. Feel free to use it. You have a bath. Thank you so much. I filled the tub with water magic, then boiled it with fire magic. Once the temperature was adjusted with more water magic, I informed the young lady it was ready. 
the preparation only took a few minutes, magic was truly convenient. After Eliaria and her two maids went into the bathroom, I returned to the others, where Hughes was rubbing his cheek and groaning. Ow ow ow. Well, that wasn't very nice. You brought it on yourself. That was a little too much. His words had certainly lacked delicacy. I was often told the same in my previous life, but even I could tell that was insensitive. In my old life, careless remarks could be taken as sexual harassment, after all. That's why I had to take extra care. If I didn't, I would have been socially ostracized. Ah, Ryoma. Welcome back. Mom. I don't know what to say. It's fine, she decided this for herself. It's not like you lied about it, right? Of course. Then it's fine. At any rate, I'm happy to see the child show an earnest interest in becoming a tamer. If she only wanted to obtain a cleaner slime, she could have negotiated with you to give her one instead. What? Did you just say? Excuse me. That you could have given her one. Did the thought not cross your mind? Ha, 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 ha. I wonder why such a simple thought hadn't occurred to me. Now that I thought about it, wasn't that the simplest way of obtaining something? It never even crossed my mind. Maybe I've been isolated in the forest for too long. Goodness. Ah, such youth. That was amusing. But I truly was glad about my daughter's attitude, you know. I see. For some reason, I felt tired. After all of that, the young lady got out of her bath and collected the water, taking it to the river in search of slimes while I had my clothing sized by the maids. She was lucky and managed to return successfully by the time I finished trying on all the clothes. Of course, she had her captured slime with her, and made her first contract under the watchful eye of me and ten others. By then, it had already gotten rather late, so it was decided that they would all stay over at my place for the night. I offered them all my bathtub and got cooking. The two maids and Sebas the butler offered to help, but I refused. While I would have been grateful for help, my kitchen was rather cramped. There was no room for three adults and all the cooking utensils were a children's size, made for me. It would have been bad for their backs. For the record, dinner was a ginger stir-fry imitation using wild animal meat and ground geiger. Reinhardt took a great liking to it, and it was received favorably by the others as well, but it was a little off to me, as a former Japanese person. However, the taste grew on me. The only source of salt I had was what little rock salt was in the cliffs, but they contained minerals that had to be separated and refined through alchemy to prevent harm to the body. If I didn't have alchemy, I wouldn't have been able to live in this forest for three years. I had managed to secure a non-life-threatening amount, but it wasn't satisfactory. Well, for now, I was glad that they liked it.